So, what exactly is animal altruism? Well, it turns out that such a basic question requires a much more complex answer to understand. Altruism is generally defined as an act in which an animal sacrifices its own well-being for the benefit of another animal. We can explain this using an example. Out in the grasslands of North America, there are lots of prairie dogs. They're colonial animals that live in complex networks of burrows. To stay wary of predators, prairie dogs generally post sentries to watch for signs of danger. Let's call one of these sentries Bob. While on duty, Bob notices a coyote on the prowl, heading straight for the prairie dog colony. Bob now has two choices. He can either endanger himself by making a warning sound and save other prairie dogs, or try to escape and survive, obviously increasing his chances of reproducing. Say Bob warns the other prairie dogs. He'll die, but his sacrifice will save all the other prairie dogs around him who will have time to go and hide. Ideally, such a system would benefit the population as a whole, since many members benefit from just one member's selflessness. But what if certain individuals don't practice altruism? These free riders get the benefits of the altruistic system without risking their own survival. Prairie dogs like Bob, who sacrificed their own lives, would be exploited, and the gene for altruistic instincts would be selected against and eventually eradicated. Ultimately, if Bob chooses to warn the others, it won't be out of compassion for his friends and family. Rather, such a case of altruism provides a method to preserve Bob's own genes in the population. Even though drawing attention to himself will likely cause the elimination of Bob's individual genes, by increasing the survival rates of his family, his relatives will pass on genes common in the family. Bob's actions are an example of kin selection, where an animal engages in self-sacrificial behavior to selectively benefit the genetic fitness of its relatives. Along with all of his other genes, it's likely that at least some of Bob's relatives will have genes coding for altruistic instincts as well, maintaining its prevalence in the gene pool despite the individual disadvantages it causes. In contrast to Darwin, whose theory involves direct fitness, the ability of an organism to pass on its own genes to its offspring, altruism increases an organism's indirect fitness, the organism's ability to protect other organisms that share its genes. The combination of indirect fitness and direct fitness are known as inclusive fitness, the ability of an organism to maintain its genes in its gene pool of its population. Altruistic behaviors can ultimately increase inclusive fitness more than selfish behaviors do. In 1964, W.D. Hamilton, a biologist, proposed a mathematical model for altruism in nature, now called Hamilton's Rule. It states that altruism will be selected for in a population if R times B is greater than C, where B is the benefit and number of offspring equivalents gained by the recipient of the altruism, C is the cost in number of offspring equivalents suffered by the donor, and R is the genetic relatedness of the altruist to the beneficiary. Relatedness is the probability that a gene in the altruist is shared by the potential recipient of the altruistic behavior. The more distantly related the members of a population are to the altruistic donor, the donor sees less value in sacrificing itself. The coefficient of relatedness, or R, can be calculated based on generational differences. Because of the separation of homologous chromosomes in meiosis, each generation of offspring receives 50% of the genetic material of each parent. Okay, so back to Bob. Say Bob has... One second... Say Bob has one, two, three siblings, and they're all around when the coyote approaches. The R coefficient is one half, since for any given gene in either parent, there's a 50% chance that Bob and one of his siblings will have gotten the same version of it. What's B? Well, each prairie dog might have three to four offspring if it survives to pass on its genes. So B is three siblings times, let's say, four offspring each. So B is 12. 12 offspring will be saved if their parents, Bob's siblings, survive the coyote attack. What's C? C is the cost, which is Bob's potential offspring that he sacrifices in sending out the warning signal. That's also 4. R times B, which we'll do down here, is 1 half times 12, which is equal to 6 and C is 4. So since 6 is greater than 4, 
Bob actually improves his chances of maintaining his genes in the gene pool by sacrificing his own life, since each of his siblings bears about 50% of Bob's genes. By acting altruistically, Bob improves his inclusive fitness, and since Bob's altruistic genes run in the family, some of Bob's siblings probably have the gene too, and altruism will be retained in the gene pool. That's animal altruism, and I hope that's helpful.